Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light going live for you inside the Blue Light Police Recruitment Facebook group. If you're watching this on the replay, check the links below to find out how to do how to join over 22,000 people who are part of this group who make it just such an awesome place to share all things police recruitment and in the development of your career once you're actually in the police. So in this live I want to talk to you a little bit about the online assessment center written exercise and about what I think is the biggest fib from the College of Policing because in their guidance document they tell you that you don't need to have any knowledge of policing in order to be able to manage any of the exercises in the online assessment center. So where's this coming from? Well this evening I've just run a uh, webinar for members of the Online Assessment Centre plus webinar service. This is where we actually practice twice a week the skills required to completely ace and get 90% plus in the stage two interview part of the Online Assessment Centre, in the stage three written and in the stage three briefing. And my clients get those results. Actually, I guarantee that they're going to pass. If they don't pass and they've done the work I've asked them to do, then I'll give them a full refund. I mean, I can't say fairer than that, can I? So have a look at the links below. Yeah, it is a shameless plug, but joining the Online Assessment Centre Plus webinars service is probably the one thing that you're going to be able to do to ensure that you get through this stage, because if you don't, some forces are now making you wait six months before you can reapply. And you just don't want to be in that place. It takes far too long in the first place to join the police. You don't want to be in that place. So, um, stage three written uh, webinar this evening for course number four, Oblique 2023. In case any of you are actually in the webinar service and you missed it, you just need to search for written and four, Oblique 2023 inside the Facebook group for the Online Assessment Centre Plus webinars and it'll take you to the recording of what we did tonight. Over two and a half hours we went through the case study that I provide for you which is very very close to the one that you're actually going to get and what you're going to be presented with is actually an absolute failure of neighbourhood policing. I used to be a neighbourhood policing inspector uh, for seven years, I was out there on the front line as a neighbourhood inspector in two different neighbourhoods, did a lot of pioneering work with the Home Office, Department for Communities and Local Government, a lot of work around tackling organised crime and helping to build strong community to take its place and fill the gap. Also did a lot of work um, after that with the force to help the force uh, improve its strategic approach to problem solving and community engagement. Retired and went on to do a lot of work with the European Union. I've worked with other forces and councils on this. So I like to think I know what I'm talking about. So they're going to give you a scenario where crime and antisocial behaviour around the block of flats has pretty much got out of control. Um, where there's a lot of people who have English as a second language who are really struggling to engage with the police where the police are having very little impact on crime and antisocial behaviour and trust in the police is at a low, low level. We've also got, they're also going to present to you a scenario where someone's reporting a vulnerable adult with a disability, it doesn't tell us what the disability is or what the vulnerability is, who's been victim of two instances of what I would describe as hate crimes, quite serious ones, one of them really serious, and it doesn't appear any investigation has been carried out as yet. So the questions basically ask you, how are you going to approach this? What are your considerations? What sort of impact is all of this going to have? How are you going to tackle the criminal issues here, the crime issues here? And how are you going to help build confidence in the community in um, the police service? And I'd also extend that to the council and other services, because it actually mentions that in the questions. This is not a scenario <laughs> where you don't need to have any knowledge of policing. 
This is a scenario where you absolutely need to have knowledge of policing. I just don't understand why they've introduced it. As a neighbour of the inspector, I'd want some of my best officers working on this. Actually, as a neighbour of the inspector, I wouldn't have let things get so bad. I wouldn't have let things get so horrendously bad as what's outlined in this case study. But in any case, it's all imaginary, it's all made up. So I'm going to give you a few little hints here about how to actually approach this. Of course, this is just like 5% of what we actually cover. What we covered tonight pretty much gives you a template to get 90% plus because that's what my clients consistently get. And remember, if they don't pass refund time, I've only given two of those over the past year. So it's an absolute no brainer uh, to provide that refund service. And even if you sign up and within 24 hours you think this isn't for me, you still get a refund. I mean, I'm all in on this journey. Are you all in on this journey, folks? Uh, just a few shout outs before I tell you about a couple of different models you might want to utilise. We've got um, Connor and Charlotte, Stephen and Peter, Thompson, Michael, Megan, uh, Alexander, Ethan. Uh, we've got Claire, Jane. Uh, we've got Matthew. We've got Eilish. Uh, Holly's joined us oh, and, and a load of others as well. So it's great to have you on board uh, watching on this live. If you've got any questions, please do ask. Now, stage three written. So one of the things that we're going to utilise in considering how we're going to approach this um, investigation into the two hate crimes that have taken place. One of them is really serious. Like I said, it really, really serious. If it went the wrong way, we could have been dealing with a grievous bodily harm or even a, a manslaughter murder investigation. You don't need to have any knowledge of policing. Where did they get that from? So one thing I've learned all the way through my career is to have a systematic process to deal with everything. I'm completely disorganised, by the way. I'm the most disorganised person you could ever meet, ever, full stop. I'm really, really seriously disorganised and chaotic. But what really helped me throughout my career career was having a systematic approach to just about everything and anything that I was faced with and this is no different so we're going to utilize something called the building blocks of a criminal investigation to ensure we approach the vulnerable person with a disability and make sure that everything is uh, as it should be and that this individual can't come to any further harm so the first part of the building blocks is exactly that preventing people from coming to harm uh, protecting life so there's some things that we need to do to mitigate the risk of any further harm and to ensure that the threat of that harm is removed. And so what we talked about tonight is several things that we can do to address that. Remember bullet points for everything because you've only got 10,000 word count. Um, second thing we're going to do is we're going to um, secure and preserve the scene of the crime or the scenes because there's two of them. And then there's certain things we need to do there. And from there, we once we've got the scene secured, we're going to um, ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to preserve the evidence from those scenes. And again, there's certain things that you need to do. Next stage in the building blocks is securing witnesses and also any form of CCTV. We can also work out from where the rock was found and where the hole in the window was. Yes, it was a rock that was thrown through a window into a living room. And the person, the vulnerable male, was actually in the living room at the time. That's why it could have been a manslaughter or a murder. Um, we can actually work out where approximately the rock was thrown from. We just need to do a little bit of math, don't we? Trigonometry or something. Anyway, we can work out what the likely trajectory would be, which means that we can start seeking CCTV that might be panning on that area. So there's so many things we can do there, and all of that leads to identifying a suspect and we would then talk about what we would do to secure their um, prompt and effective arrest so that we could do a house search. And from there, we can actually secure evidence that would match the forensic evidence that we've seized. Anyway, pile of stuff there that you could talk about, all of it bullet pointed, all of it exactly what I'd expect from a really, really effective constable. How are they asking you to deal with that? I don't know, but they are. And the golden rule applies. Those are called gold, make the rules. So those are the building blocks, and one of, you might be thinking, well, that's a bit draconian, that arresting them. And are you sure that's the sort of thing they want? Yes, there's plenty of things we're going to do around that. And then later on 
in our exercise, we looked at what our working group would do, especially the community members, in forming a community scrutiny panel, what sort of alternative to a court disposal we could look at for that individual. And that's when we brought in things like adverse childhood experiences and a whole wealth of other things. That again, will get you 90% plus. Now, all of this and everything we talk about is grounded in research and it's also grounded in my practical experiences over the years as a neighbourhood inspector and working with the EU in Central and Eastern Europe mainly and in working with forces and councils across the country and speaking at conferences about this. So it's not just Brendan's wild ideas. So in terms of dealing with the wider issues on the, the whole estate, we then looked at the SARA problem solving model and all the constituent parts of that. It stands for scanning analysis, uh, response and assessment. And so we looked at all the different elements of this and how we would interweave those, weave those into um, our actions that we would take and basically just giving you a very, very structured approach to completely, completely, again, answer the questions in the most amazing way, doing things in your written exercise that most forces are actually just dreaming of doing at the moment. So completely, completely nailing it. So there you go, folks. That's what we did tonight. And... The, my message is, is to have a structured approach, one that you don't have to worry about because you've got two hours to answer this, these, these three questions, two hours to answer three questions based on very limited information that you're going to be given. And that makes it both easy and difficult. If you don't know what you're doing and you've not got a systematic approach, it's going to make it difficult for you. You're going to struggle to write for two hours. Whereas my clients tonight, some of them, have been working on this already and they're talking about even with bullet points they're pushing the 10,000 character limit that's what I like to see this is what's going to get them awesome awesome amazing marks so folks if you're watching this live thank you for joining us more of you have just joined LB Jake Stephanie uh, some of you are actually on this webinar tonight so you know exactly what I'm talking about um, if you do have any questions, please do let me know live. Just drop me a line inside the Facebook group. If you're watching this on the replay, and if you've, you've got this far and you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, it means that you are really interested in securing the best mark possible in your online assessment centre. So check the links below. Come and join us on the webinars. If within 24 hours it's not for you, full refund, so there's no risk there. And if you do the work I ask of you, and you fail, then I've failed you and I'll give you a full refund. So I'm all in on this journey with you. This is what I've been doing for 28 years. I've been 38 years in the police sector. I've been coaching and supporting people to succeed for 28 years. I know exactly what I'm doing. You've got to do the work though. I'll provide you the guidance. You've got to do the hard work. That's the deal. Are you up for that deal? Only you can answer that. Come and join us folks and I'll see you on one of the webinars very soon. Bye-bye for now.